benefit of having all those citrus fruits in there, like lemon, is that cool I pulled a spoon out of my apron? As Andy will tell you, I go through a lot of spoons in a day. So the first step is gonna be slicing the fish yourself. I'm gonna lightly moisten this knife. A long knife definitely helps you cut nice, even slices. I'm gonna cut down, and that's gonna give me a nice, even piece with two cut faces that are gonna take that cure really beautifully. The reason why we wanna leave the skin on is that's gonna help the fish hold its shape while it's being cooked. When you do it yourself, you're gonna end up with pieces that are gonna cure and cook in exactly the same amount of time. So now we have our four beautifully even pieces of salmon and we're gonna lay it in this dish. So the reason why we use kombu as opposed to just salt to cure this fish is it's super gentle. It's not gonna cook the outside of the fish. The kombu is then gonna draw moisture from the fish. So it's gonna leave it a little bit concentrated and with a really nice firm texture. So I've laid as much of the salmon in contact with that on that first cut face. And then I'm gonna lay the other two sheets over, all right? And then lastly, we're gonna put a few slices of lemon on this. That's gonna help draw some of the lemon aroma, some of the zest flavor into the salmon as it cures overnight. And we're just gonna wrap this and then leave it overnight to chill. The next step is gonna to be to make the miso glaze. I'm gonna take one tablespoon of miso. In this case, it's a white miso, which is one of the more milder varieties. It doesn't necessarily love to mix with other liquids. So if you just start by putting a little bit of liquid in there with it and kind of mashing it around, it'll help it incorporate a little bit better. So this is one tablespoon of miso, and then I'm working in two tablespoons of mirin, which is kind of like a sweet cooking sake. I'm also gonna be putting in one teaspoon of soy sauce just for a little bit of salt and to help pick up a little bit of color when this goes under the broiler. The next step is we're gonna make our fresh yuzu kosho. The thing about store-bought yuzu kosho is it's super salty, it's really intense. When you do it yourself, you have the ability to control how much salt, how much heat, um, how much uh, citrus you're putting in it. So what I'm gonna do is I've got one serrano chili here and one jalapeno. So there's our serrano kind of ready to go. And then I've got this jalapeno. Ooh, that pepper, actually, this is a hot one. So I'm just gonna roughly chop it here, and then we're gonna mash it using a good bit of salt that kind of acts as an abrasive. It's gonna help draw moisture from it and break it down. Then I'm gonna start working this mixture with the side of my knife. You can see it start to get a little bit more liquidy, a little jammier. It's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, pepper done. Yuzu is a citrus fruit with a super short season, and you're probably not gonna be able to find it fresh. One of the things you can find in Japanese markets especially is uh, yuzu juice. So we're gonna zest this grapefruit directly over, then I'm gonna take the rest of my lemon and zest this directly onto it. When I can't find fresh yuzu, I like to use a mix of other citrus fruits. If you literally kind of combine all of them, you end up with something that approaches the complexity of the yuzu itself. I'm gonna mix this in just so that that zest doesn't dry out. I'm gonna use some of this lemon. I'm gonna use a little bit of the lime and then I'm gonna cut a little wedge of grapefruit and get some of that in there too. And last but not least, I'd say if you can find the bottled juice, a teaspoon of this will give you just the intensity you want but without being overwhelming. So stir that together, and then I'm gonna season this with a little bit of salt. Only needs a pinch. Wow. All right, boom, we're there. Yuzu kosho, and we got our miso glaze. We're gonna be ready to go back to our salmon. This is the salmon that we set up overnight last night so we can finish this dish in the same day. So when you unwrap it, the first thing you're gonna notice is that kombu, rather than looking dry, a lot of it has actually hydrated. So the salmon, you're gonna notice, has that kind of gently, kind of half cured kind of look that you get from smoked salmon. And we're gonna transfer this to a baking sheet. Now, honestly, it should probably have taken all the salt that it's gonna need, just from the kombu and from the glaze we're about to put on it. So you probably don't need to season with salt. We're not putting tons on here. We just wanna lightly coat the outside. From here, we're gonna go right under the broiler four minutes um, just to cook this through. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that super closely. All right, so that is exactly what we're looking for. We want some browning around the edges. A cake tester, if you put it in, you're not gonna feel any real resistance of those bands of, um, of collagen, and it's warm, we're good. So, we're ready to plate. Yeah, should be easy to release. 
The tray is, of course, very hot, so be careful. So this is a great illustration of why we wanted to keep the skin on these pieces of salmon. It's gonna help these hold together so much better once it's cooked. Lastly, we're just gonna put a little of this yuzu kosho we made on. This is gonna flavor the entire dish, so it has to be pretty intense. A little bit of that extra juice is great. This was super simple, took just minutes of active time. Let's see how we did. Mmm, still has a texture of fresh salmon, but it has so much flavor from that kombu. We did well.